Okay, in this drill we're going to be talking about body posture and the tennis player. So body posture is really most easily seen between points. It's not really something you look at. I mean, technically you can look at body posture during the shots, but I'm not looking at that. I'm talking about body posture between shots and that message that you're sending sublimity and with your body language to your opponent, whether you're fighting or giving up or angry or frustrated. Uh, so a lot of players, a lot of good coaches think that your body posture should be such that you don't send any message. You don't send a message to fight or you don't send a message of depression. Okay, but we all know that body posture gets away from us really, really quickly. So we're going to go on the court right now with Marty and Carly talk about this. And we're also, body posture is very cl uh, closely related to your inner voice. Okay, and I'm going to tell you a story, a true story story of how you need to keep your mouth shut even though you might have thoughts and want to blurt them out and it's going to be very interesting you so for you so let's go on the court with Marty and Carly and check out what we can do to better our body posture uh, think of it like this at the beginning of a match Marty has her bucket of water here imagine a bucket that's uh, visible it's clear and it's got a gallon of water in it and Carly has the same thing uh, right here on her table so we got these two buckets of water, they're full with water, and the water represents your, your energy, your fuel that you start with. You've got a full tank, you've got a full tank. As the match starts, the little spigot gets turned on, and now water starts to drip out, slowly and surely. If you check in five minutes after the match starts, you know, the water's pretty full still, and these two bodies, they're, they're tank, okay? But as, body, as, the, as the match goes on and progresses, progresses, uh, it'll start to change. If Carly's in really good shape, her faucet will be dripping slower so she can maintain more water, more energy. And if you're like me, or Marty's not in good shape, but my, my tank will probably be emptying quicker, okay? So think about it like that. The worst thing you can do, as time goes on, you will get depleted in the match, energy-wise, physically, and also emotionally. But when you start acting up, if Marty's down to a quarter tank and Carly has a half tank, and Carly starts throwing a racket and throwing it up, it's like taking her spigot and opening it up. She's just losing all the energy. And worse yet, it's like me capturing the water and putting it over here in Marty's tank. It's just pumping her up. That's the worst possible thing you can do. So it's okay. It's okay to have feelings of frustration. You can't show them. You can't be letting your a partner or your opponent have all that energy and get pumped up. Now, I want you to look at it the, in reverse, okay? How many times have you played and you see that your opponent's getting, uh, you know, really agitated and fired up? It gives you energy, it gives you hope, okay? Now I'm gonna finish with a story. I was once playing and when I was about 23, a kid who I had not played for years, we're both kind of out of college now, and I was always better than this kid, and uh, I was playing him, and he was playing really well in front of his home crowd, which had a kind of a, a lot of people watching. I felt like I was in a hostile environment. As I played this match, I, I, the first set unfolded, and I lost a set 6-2, and I was thinking to myself, this kid's not better. I've always been able to beat this kid, okay? But he, maybe he got better. I hadn't seen him for a few years, so I thought, man, does this kid possibly pass me this much? So I kept going, and initially I thought, well, I think maybe he might be training. Maybe he's just having a really, really good day, uh, but he's going to come down to earth. But as the second set unfolded, I got down a break early. He's playing great. He's playing shots that I've never seen him play. I'm now down 1-4, and in my mind, I'm still trying, but I'm kind of realizing, well, this is probably, I'm going to lose. I think maybe this kid is better than me. And a critical point, he opened his mouth, and this is how it unfolded. He hit an overhead, I dug out a shot in singles. He hit another overhead, I dug out another one, and he hit a third overhead, and I dug out that one, and on the fourth overhead, he netted it, you know? Um, and as soon as he netted it, he got mad, and he yelled out loud, come on, man, I knew you couldn't keep this up. Those were the words he spoke. Do you know what that did to me? That was my assurance. I knew it. He was treeing. He is coming back down to earth. He just said it himself. So it just made me fight a little bit harder. I grinded out that set, and then I took him easily in the third because he was so frustrated. So there's an example, and I'm sure I've done this in reverse and given lots of my opponents things to get fired up about. I'm certain of it. But uh, you want to make sure that you don't help your opponent. You got one opponent already. You don't need to be your own second opponent and giving him a bunch of energy as well. Okay, everybody, so we just got off the court with Marty and Carly and myself talking about body posture. We heard the story of how the opponent kind of let me back in the match by kind of opening up his mouth. But I want to make one last run at you about the importance of body posture and this whole idea of training between points. If you're a rec player, I know that rec players, at least the ones I coach, they're so hung up on technique. And the way you get better at tennis is so multifaceted 
that you can't just ignore one area. Obviously, when you're a new player, you have to worry about the technical aspects, how you hold the racket, kind of the how and, and all that stuff. But as you look at the pros, as they progress and get better and better and better and ultimately go pro, they're working actually less on technique. Their technique is set. And they're worrying more about the mental toughness area, the, the emotional, the fight. And this is a video, obviously, we have it under the mental training area, mental toughness. But body posture is, and this whole area is super, super important. You have to make sure that when you're competing, you're not setting the wrong image. This is something that even the best players get help with. I know a story that Dr. Jim Blair told once about his helping Pete Sampras, okay? Dr. Jim Blair being the, the really renowned sports psychologist and had a big impact on tennis, okay? He was working with Pete Sampras, and if you, rec if you recall, if you're old enough to remember Pete Sampras in his heyday, he had a hang, a hang down look. He was kind of known for always looking down at the ground. His head was down, and he wasn't necessarily upset. And he did it so much that uh, they asked him about it frequently at Wimbledon. And one time he just got frustrated and said, the reason I'm looking down is because I'm looking for coins in the grass. You know, he's just being funny because he was just sick of being, uh, having that uh, question asked to him. So even the very best players can struggle with this. So body posture, a huge, huge thing. Why don't you look at it in reverse a little bit. When you are competing, you're in a tight match. It could go either way. And you look across the net and you see bad body posture kind of this and hanging the head and walking all defeated, doesn't that pump you up? Of course it does. So this gets back to this area that you, even though you might feel a certain way, you have to act it. We, we expect this of even young players, that you might have emotions and feel a certain way, but you're gonna portray a different image on the court, okay? So body posture, don't look, overlook it. It's a really important part of your development.